Red flags when you're young. <laughs> there is no red flags. <laughs> everything is everything is which is good actually. Yeah. It's good to have this attitude. But yeah, I learned about red flags <laughs> quite late. <laughs> and um, yeah, and first you kinda I memorized those red flags. Memorized and then I started to spot those red flags in people around me. And once you start doing it, you become more and more with practice, more good at seeing red flags and also maybe even dismissing some as not that red <laughs> because some people in the, there is a scale I would say of red flags some are really really bad and you need to know them for sure uh, for example like if everything is nice and calm and you both having fun and out of nowhere the person who are you is making a te temper tantrum and you cannot just even like thinking back about what happened you cannot understand what you said or did wrong what just happened you kind of out of any clues and of course you will be blaming yourself like normal person will do because there is definitely in in uh, healthy conversations and communications both contribute and both kind of have responsibility when something goes wrong so you will be checking with yourself what happened and wouldn't even find in any clues and uh, this is a red flag red flag when you make someone upset and don't understand why why that person is so moody out of nowhere and this is a sign of uh, narcissism or just immature person which doesn't matter really you don't want to deal with any of those unless you you question what happened uh, I mean you ask the question I you ask a question later what happened then if the person will explain to you clearly and apologize then it could be something related to his past something from his trauma events but I would say uh, make a note if it happened once if it happened twice you don't want it <laughs> you don't want to wait for the third time once uh, you see red flag two times you're ready to stop any any communication with that person and you can actually on the first time you can accept apologies if there would be apologies you can accept apologies and you can say that no, you don't accept this behavior and you will say that next time you would prefer if the person would react differently or at least try to or yeah and this person if he knows that this is his something from his past uh, he would appreciate you saying this to him or her. He would appreciate you pointing out on his uh, weak spots or spots to uh, improve. And uh, would make all efforts possible to change himself, change his behavior. Maybe it's actually a, would be a good learning uh, point for, for the person because uh, the relationship sort of uh, brought something, some wound from his past and uh, when it was in his attention before now, he knows that this needs more work and uh, he would, they would uh, work on themselves and at least it would be not that bad next time if something happens and person would notice himself and tell, oh, I'm sorry, I know this is happening again, but I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe it will make it would be much easier for you on you. But this is when a, a, a good a good uh, person you like worth your attention uh, reacts uh, strangely. But a person who you don't want to stay with 
would say, oh no no, it's all you. Like what what are you talking about? This you did this, you did that, you you made me this, you made me that, and this is all your fault. So that is definitely red flag. Again, repeating what we were talking about because there was a lot of words after. Um, I was talking about when situation when everything is nice and you're happy and you're in a sort of or or like calm and just relaxed and one of a sudden out of nowhere person you're having a conversation with or you're hanging out with or whatever you're doing just reacts with anger or with some sort of mm, like some strong negative reaction on something you did or said and you don't try to understand what you did and couldn't figure out and you apologize and it doesn't make it better it only make it worse with a, a toxic person next time it happens toxic person actually will remember your reaction and will sort of make a note for themselves that what are your weak spots and next time it would be even worse and third first time i really encourage you not to wait until third time but gradually it will become just a bad routine for you when you would be always apologizing and someone would be always screaming at you for absolutely no reason but eventually called abuse eventually you would even believe that there is a reason and you would believe that it's all your fault you will doubt yourself you will become absolutely not yourself you will lose yourself in this relationship and uh, it would be very very hard to get out and to get back to your true self after years or months or whatever longer is worse whatever amount of abuse you will that was my answer on red flags boundaries uh, there is a simple and complex uh, component of boundaries as i see it simple is i would start explaining with simple stuff i would say let's say your home and you plan to watch a movie with just yourself and popcorn and your dog on the couch. And someone calls me and calls you and asks you to join them in a, at a party right at that moment. And um, you can of course say, yeah, why not? Because because there are there can be three different First, you get excited, you like that person, and you really feel like, oh, that's cool, I can go. Another thing you can say, you you, you can feel like you don't want to go anywhere, and you can say no. And uh, from that no could be two scenarios. One scenario is the person on the other uh, end of the phone can say, oh, Sure, I'm, 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 it's, it's, it's not what I expected to hear, but I respect your decision time and I understand you had some plans. Cool, I'll let you know next time in advance. And this is all healthy <laughs> and unhealthy bonds and crossing of your boundaries would be, it's also a little bit healthy when he say, oh, come on, let's go. You don't even know what you're missing on. And it could be maybe okay, but then if you say, no, I really not feeling like going. But the person on the other side would be saying something like, oh, come on, like what? Is it, are you, you, you don't like me that much? Or you, you are not with us? We are your friends. This is the, the only time we can decide that finally to go. So some, some sort of a blaming, some sort of a guilt tripping and uh, pushing you too much this is really crossing your boundaries and that's where you need to absolutely recognize it and usually it's at, at first you can you will feel it in your gut really in your body you will feel some discomfort I'll, even now I'm talking and I 
start feeling in my stomach that something is wrong. Your body is telling you, like, this is wrong. That's not how you want to be treated, and this is really invading your space. And uh, you should just, you can even just hang up without any explanation, because at this point, you have a right to protect your boundaries because they were really, really violated by uh, saying that, by kind of, yeah, making you guilty for not going. Um, yeah, and this is just a simple example of boundaries. The complex uh, concept of boundaries is uh, kind of knowing who you are, knowing your worst and knowing your past, and having that long-term goals and staying within yourself, uh, not becoming codependent, so-called codependent, when when you are in a relationship with someone. It can be even friends, or it can be it, it's worse in a romantic relationship when you become so much inter intertwined with another person, so you don't even know at some point where you stop and where the other person begins you start always kind of saying about yourself as we it's it's not bad but it's better to have something separate not all you and all other person should become one there should be some some and it's it's impossible there are no no two human beings on the planet uh, who are so similar with interests and everything that they don't have anything that different differ them apart so you better protect your identity you protect what's valuable for you your interests your morals your likings like anything which is yours and there could be some things that you like to do as a couple together, but not completely everything because this is this becomes usually it wouldn't happen in a healthy relationship anyways, but when it's not healthy, then the other person just will engulf you and you would lose yourself. And uh, then he would lose you <laughs> because uh, there would be no interest in you anymore because you become same as the other person and it's not it's not attractive uh, yeah that's when tragedy happens when you get discarded by a narcissist usually when when at first they mold you into something they like you to be and after you became that person they lose interest in you. Uh, not so much because you are as much alike as they are, probably, but most, mostly because you become, they're not, they're not the best artists in the world. So they, they usually, something out of their hands, something comes out ugly. So they don't like you anymore uh, after years of abuse because you become not that attractive. discard there are two big differences as Jewish people say between discard and break up discard hurts incredibly it's very painful and I, I'm feeling very very sorry to anyone who's been discarded um, it is painful probably the worst pain you could ever experience advice on how to how to survive the discard first of all never try to if you can go back and uh, just believe it's gonna be better every moment from now on you will feel better and better and you will be fine you wouldn't nothing will break you because you've been through narcissistic abuse and this is even worse 
nightmare than it is card. And uh, just to give a little bit of uh, vision of what's going on, why it hurts so bad is because through the relationship you've been introduced to high highs and lows so-called it's oxytocin and adrenaline it's a hormonal disbalance and hormonal dysregulation and your body got used to the, those hormones very high amounts of them it's i think it's not even physiological to the point it's more like some someone will experience this when they take in some drugs and uh, so that's what's going on you are feeling the need the urge that craving for the next hit which you are not getting and that is hit next interaction with your uh, partner and by not getting this you start suffering badly and it is physiological suffering it's not only you sorry you kind of grieving you upset and all that emotions it is physiological it is you are lacking something you're lacking hormonal uh you're depleted from hormones in your blood and everything just disbalanced if you will keep this thought in your had that you are just like a drug addict going through that completion. It may help, it may not, but usually it helps under at least understanding what's going on, telling yourself, repeating that this is gonna be okay, you'll be okay. It's just uh it's just your body is craving something. You I would advise to be as easy on yourself as possible, take walks, even though it, nothing looks uh, shiny and <laughs> nice to you at the moment. You don't even think about anything, but still force yourself, go get out of the bed, go for a walk, be in nature, listen to nice music, sleep as much as, you, as possible, drink a lot of water, yes, as simple as that and uh, distract yourself with something just rudely distract go to parties or do something different good if you would have some friends who can help you with that and here allow them to cross your boundaries because you would say no for sure but tell them this is for, for medical reasons you need to be out and about and distracted uh, from your self and from your terrible discard uh, that happened to you and uh, just leave you can even put alarm i know sometimes it feels like time is stopped and you will just you wouldn't survive but you will put an alarm and i guess small increments as you feel you need even every minute you survived one minute you're a hero that's great next minute would be easier five minutes one hour day passed next day would be better just remember and know it is very very hurtful and i understand that sometimes it feels like you just want to hear that voice again you just want a one word you want to be with that person again, but don't do that. Uh, no contact is the best you can have at this moment. Oh, and from psychological perspective, or oh, sort of, this is this is more, this was physiological. Uh, so to get you to understand what's going on with you, Physi uh, from psychological, uh, uh, you don't want to hear anything from that person. That person, uh, they wouldn't apologize. Nothing can be fixed. Nothing can be returned, and you don't want it. Once you, you should, you should be happy that you got discarded. Out of narcissistic abuse, there are only two ways: get discarded or somehow uh, separate yourself. Uh, but in any case, the 
feelings and the emotions and the complexity of this uh, drug depletion sort of would be the same. It doesn't matter if you will break up or they will discard you, you will still suffer. Unfortunately, uh, that's inevitable. What they do to the body for, from years of falls and highs, from years of abuse to your hormonal dis regulation is so bad that it will take I don't know, at least a month but uh, it's not going to be the whole month that painful, it's going to be lighter uh, broadly speaking, one year would get you to absolutely different point from the start to like a year after this card, you will be a different person but you need to work on yourself time itself wouldn't heal. You would have to do some extra work and put some extra effort to take yourself to the next level and return to, to the very beginning to who you were. And uh, 